it is, Mr. Charles Darwin does not take Holy Scripture literally. Adam and Eve are not our ancestors. No man descends, Darwin says. We descend from monkeys in trees. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Never. In that case, I should like to ask Mr. Darwin if it's through his mother's line or his father's. Or the two! Oh dear, oh dear. Charles Darwin published his famous work on the evolution of species through natural selection in 1859. As you might guess, it caused a sensation. We know now, of course, there is natural selection and species evolve. They change over millions of years. Uh, but back in those days... Look at me. I'm an evolved species. I'm a monkey's uncle. Yes, still mostly monkey, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Darwin revolutionized our ideas on how we originated, but there was nothing about him that was revolutionary, for instance, in his youth. And as our illustrious predecessors have amply shown, the blood is pumped by the heart. Oh. Well, what's wrong, young man? Mr. Darwin, what are you doing? <laughs> Catching these insects, Professor. The ones we collected with Mr. Henslow, the professor of natural science. And what exactly do you think you will achieve bringing bugs to an anatomy lesson? Are you really interested in medicine? That's what I've been wondering as well. What is it? Do you see something special in that insect, huh? Yes, Professor Henslow. If you will observe, near the back legs, there is a small orifice, a small hole. If this beetle is attacked, it can squirt out a substance to defend itself. Oh! It might be oh. an acid, an irritant. Might be. Definitely. Well observed, Darwin. <laughs> oh. Look over there. No doubt you recognize it as tussock grass. It's quite interesting. Would you mind bringing me back a sample? Yeah, sure, sir. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. You know, in your education, there is a gap. You should take geology, and then you might have a better idea about the soft soil in riverbeds. <laughs> I am the Reverend Sedgwick, Professor of Geology, which is the study of the Earth, of course. Now, the Earth was created exactly 6,024 years ago. But how can we know the precise date, sir? Always uh, asking such stupid questions. It says so in the Holy Bible. Didn't you ever read Genesis? Yes, sir, only I'm sure I never saw the date of creation written there. I, the date? Young man, we deduce from events mentioned in the Bible. I'd have thought that obvious. Are we not guided by Holy Scripture? Oh, oh, yes, we are, sir. We most certainly are, sir. So, Charles, you want to follow in my footsteps and be a doctor? Somehow, I just don't feel it's right for me, Dad. Ah, oh, pity. Well, then, Charles, all that's open is law and theology. Yes, you might make a preacher. It's an honorable profession. Suppose we discuss it after the holidays. <laughs> Ah, Charles! Who? Oh. Professor Henslow! What a pleasant surprise finding you here. I came especially to see you, Charles. There's a wonderful opportunity, and it's perfect for you. Tea? Yes, thanks. In a word, Charles, a ship of the Royal Navy is to be sent to explore the coast of South America to make a sea chart. Well, a map. And Captain Fitzroy wants a naturalist to go along on the expedition and take note of the plants and animals of those regions. Naturally, I recommended you. Yes, but am I really going to be fully capable of it? I mean, and would my father agree? Oh. My advice, Charles, is go and see the captain the departures from Plymouth in the autumn. Oh, yes, but... This voyage is out of foolishness, Charles. You should complete your studies. Get married. I won't forbid your going, but you will lose a great deal of time. I promise you, I'll think about it. Hey! <laughs> no, that's not how you do it. It's not a bed, Charles. It's a hammock, you see? <laughs> that's how. <laughs> I'll try. There, now you're a real sailor. Oh! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Getting his sea legs. Mr. Darwin, quick. Huh? It's there at the stern. It's a grampus. An extremely rare sea mammal. Uh, come and see it. It's extraordinary! Oh, it's the first oh. time I ever saw one! Where is it? Where is this very rare Grampus? <laughs> Rio de Janeiro, I have to turn the ship around. We have to go back to verify certain details. Why don't you go into the interior and make observations? Ah, a superb specimen. I'll get you. I'll get you. I'll get you. Ah, you'll get you. Ah. Why, it's it's a vampire bat. <laughs> oh. How curious! A cross between a serpent and a lizard. A sort of transformation. It's beautiful. Then. There is enough rising in Montevideo. We need your aid, and uh, we must protect our citizens. Of course, I'll summon more armed men from the ship. Watch out! They have barricaded the street and installed cannons. Forward! Charge! Listen to me, Rodriguez. It is impossible for you to go on this way. It will end in a massacre. We had better talk. All right, Dumas, let us talk, and here I have drinks in the cooler. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, it is all right. Everything will be all right now. <laughs> a strange custom, that. It's true they can't match our English composure. <laughs> and I might mention, my lad, you did very well in the battle. First rate for a naturalist. Jolly good. When you go into the interior, though, be sure to take a weapon, because you never know. Shh. What a strange animal. A full-grown sloth and not afraid of humans. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 oh. Curious. It's just like armor. <gasps> Let's dig down. The same, but three times as big. We'll take the bones back with us. It is curious. It's as if, over time, a species is transformed. It got much smaller. Aren't species set down once and for all in nature? Natives of Terra del Fuego, cast anchor. So these are the survivors of the flood in the Bible? I'm not so sure. But what else could they be? Surely you wouldn't question Holy Scripture.
resembling an ostrich and yet quite different. It's much smaller. It only has three toes. The neck and head covered with feathers. I have to know why. Oh, my specimen! What in the world have you done with it? Don't worry, Mr. Darwin. We saved the head and claws for you here. It's Christmas Day. No traditional Christmas goose, but we have this magnificent, uh, what do you say it's called? A nandu. Yes, of course, that's it. We'll name it Darwin in Nandus in your honor. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Our Father, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. isn't it? Yes. But the Straits of Magellan are dangerous at any time. Look at that. Hold on. Yeah. Oh. 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 Look at that, you see? Whales. The largest mammals in the world. Good work, Sims. You're beginning to get the hang of it. Maintain a northwest heading. Aye, aye, Captain. Heading northwest. Where are we headed, Captain? We're leaving Lima, and we're on course for the Galapagos, a small group of islands of no special interest, but they have to be put on our chart. I believe there's even a governor there. Absolutely unbelievable. Oh, ow, eh, oh, ah, oh, th these are creatures of the devil, Mr. Darwin. I suggest we go and pay our respects to the governor. I have no doubt he lives in a more civilized area. You go ahead. Return here in two days. Say three days. I'll study these curious creatures. <laughs> Goodbye. So Bye. long. See you in three days. in prehistoric times, maybe at the origin of life itself. Oh, look, it's unbelievable. Oh. They must be land animals because they take refuge on dry land but they swim like fish. Could they have originated in water? A sea lion, but an enormous one. I'm sure he's from the water. <laughs> Out of your daydream, Mr. Darwin. Excellent news! The governor has invited us to tea! Gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome you, my countrymen. <laughs> I trust you find the tea to your liking. Strange. These finches seem to be identical, but their beaks differ. No, that's because they are from different islands. Now, that is strange. I must see this for myself. We'll stay here and observe the finches. These finches eat only insects and caterpillars, you see? And their beaks are thin. Let's observe another island. They all have different beaks. It appears the beak is adapted to the food. Naturally, the creator knew what he was doing. 
We must be off. It's time to sail home. Let's go. Well, Charles, you depart on a two-year voyage and return five years later. Consider the time you've wasted. And you will be so good as to shave off that unfortunate beard. <laughs> you mean you don't recognize me, Charles? Uh, oh, yes, certainly, Janice. How are you? No, guess again. Susan? My cousin in Shrewsbury? <laughs> Wrong again. It's true. I was just a little girl when you left. Emma! Emma Wedgwood! How stupid, of course. Well, you're all grown up now. Look here, why don't we take a stroll in the garden? It's so warm tonight. Oh, Charles, do tell me all about your voyage, all the wild animals you must have seen. Gorillas. No, there weren't gorillas. Not in the Americas. Oh, well, then lions. <laughs> no. <laughs> <gasps> Well, then what? There were sloths and armadillos, sea elephants, as well as iguanas, condors, oh. snakes. That's what I saw. Oh, oh, What is it, Emma? Did I scare no, you? No, no, Charles, but something's crawling on me. Where? On my ankle. Well, let me see. Show you my ankle out of the question, Charles. <laughs> then it will just bite you. Oh, no, Charles. <laughs> All right, then, but only a tiny look. Oh, quite nice. My ankle? Oh, you shouldn't say such things, Charles. Yes, it's a beetle. You mean a beetle? Yes, look here. It's a corpus lunaris. They're rare this early in springtime. See how his protonium is rounded. See, it's elytrons. Nine stripes, no less. <laughs> Charles and Emma will get married and settle down in this pretty place near London. They're there to live happily for many years and have many children. Mr. Charles, the baby is a boy, sir, and he, Mrs. Darwin, are fine. Marvelous. Please tell Mrs. Darwin I'll be right there. I've almost finished here. Mr. Charles, Mr. Charles, this time it's a girl. Marvelous, I'll be right there. <laughs> oh, yes, there were to be eight in all. Over the next 20 years, Charles Darwin rarely left his study. He's elaborating the theory that will make him famous, the theory of evolution. Emma, I'm an inattentive husband, I know that. Charles, I am perfectly contented with you. I know that what you are doing is important, and so I do what I can. Now it's nearly complete, my theory of evolution, and I know it's right. What is it, exactly? Well, now, you've seen giraffes. When we take the children to the zoo. Yes, quite so. Well, giraffes live in arid zones of Africa, very dry. When grass becomes scarce, they eat leaves from treetops, which the other animals can't reach. Many naturalists, like the Frenchman Lamarck, believe the giraffes acquire long necks because they stretch them, and so their offspring are born with long necks. But that's not how it happens. Not at all. In every species of animal, and humans too, there are slight variations, hardly noticeable ones. With the giraffe, when grass is scarce, the ones with longer necks are more fit to survive. And the trade is passed on. And that's what I call natural selection. Uh, and with humans? At one time, his species didn't exist at all. The Earth is older than 6,000 years, as claimed by the Bishop of Usher. Man, no doubt, evolved from a species like this. A monkey, Charles? No, not precisely. A sort of missing link between us and the ape. Oh. Earlier, it evolved from the monkey. Charles, the work you've done is remarkable. Your theory of natural selection is excellent. You have to be published. Yes, my friend, but I must be absolutely sure this time, before I publish. I can still recall the laughter when I proposed the idea that a bear, swimming with its mouth open over several thousand years, would turn into a whale. <laughs> oh, my friend, it was an error of youth. Who hasn't made them? That's all forgotten now. All the same. Do you recall Coney Baron's attack on Lamarck's theories? Scorn and ridicule. Let us consider this theorist, this upstart, this imposter, this Lamarck with his ridiculous speculations. All these abominations are pure absurdities of reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 well,
Wait a minute. And my friend, your eminent colleague, Reverend Sedgwick. Remember what he said of Lamarck's theories? I detest such theories. They are cold, materialistic, and to be rejected out of hand because they exclude any notion of a divine creator. So you understand my reserve if my theory of natural selection and evolution of species is an insult to God. Though as Jarwin hesitates, afraid to publish his theory, another naturalist, Alfred Russell Wallace, is studying living species in Asia. Hmm. I observe. In the struggle for survival, those animals best adapted to their environment are more likely to survive as are their descendants who inherit their traits. So it is species evolved by natural selection the best adapted. He's evolved the same principle of evolution through natural selection. Charles, you can't wait any longer. You must publish. But my book's not finished. Mr. Darwin, as a geologist, categorically I endorse everything you say in the light of all our research concerning the Earth. Very well, I'll publish, but only the first three volumes. It is my intention... Read all about it. Sensational, according to a naturalist, Charles Darwin, oh. man, is oh. really a must oh. Read all about it. <laughs> Did you say the latest? We're all descended from apes. Charles Darwin says so. Oh. 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 No! Blasphemy! Darwin insults the Almighty himself! Something must be done! Yes, Monsignor, I will demolish Darwin and his theory. Just do it! There is a meeting at Oxford. In a few days, you will see, Monsignor. As we all know, our Lord, the Divine Architect, has created a perfect world for man's happiness, and I submit that Mr. Darwin's theory is not only blasphemous, it is ridiculous. As we all know, the Earth was created 6,000 years ago, according to the Bishop of Usher, in the light of his biblical studies and science, the handmaiden of our mother church has no right to stray off the path. Huxley, naturalist. May I suggest the Bible was written for simple people of the time. Its language yeah. is not that of science. Galileo proved this when he demonstrated that the Earth goes around the sun and not the contrary. Oh. Lyle, geologist, member of the Royal Society, I may assure you that the Earth is millions of years old and not... We are all well aware of your fate, Mr. Lyle. Very well, then. Man is descended from monkeys. Mag, I ask, whether in Mr. Darwin's case, whether it's from his grandfather or his grandmother. There can be no dishonor, Mr. Wilberforce, in descending from a monkey. However, it is quite dishonorable to have as an ancestor a man who, to gain for himself a facile advantage, would take a tone of irony concerning a science about which he knows nothing and whose only argument is religious prejudice. The first edition of The Origin of Species is sold out. Have to print another edition. I think it could be a success.